world has a way of changing. <laughs> and we change too. Who is he? Jacob is Dom's brother. Been a long time, Dom. Little brother. Uh, hi, Mr. John Cena. It's a pleasure to, to see you. My name is Santiago. I'm from Spain, from Finemania. Nice to meet you. Santiago, good to see you. Um, congrats on the movie. I had so much fun. Congrats on your career. You've given me so much joy through the years. So uh, congrats. I'm Thank you very much for the kind words. It's okay. Um, I, I imagine that for a boy whose favorite book was uh, Cars and Trucks and Things That Go, being part of the saga should be something great, right? It is. It really is. And to combine uh, two of the things that I love the most, performing and entertaining and cars and vehicles, uh, man, this is, it wasn't much work involved with this. It was a lot of enjoyment. But I've heard, I've read some interviews back in the day that you were not um, a speed fan. I mean, you have always loved cars and vehicles, but uh, you're very, um, I don't know, very calm when you are talking about being fast. Is that a thing that uh, goes on in the day now? Do you, are you a peaceful driver? That, uh, that might be a little bit of a misconception. Uh, I don't have any aspirations to be a professional driver. But man, I, I, I love all of vehicles. I think a lot of people who enjoy speed um, get lost in the data of, of vehicles and what they can do in their zero to 60 time, their braking distance, their G-force. That stuff is fun. I, I like to go fast in a car that's made to go fast for sure. But if, if, you, if you're stuck in an old uh, beat, like my, I still have my first car, a 1989 Jeep, which is a four cylinder and it can't go over... 70 75 kilometers per hour but i love that car and i'm never getting rid of it and it's not about going fast in that car it's just about what it means to me so it's uh i i've known to to push the speed limit now and again but it's it's not a focus of mine okay okay i love that um uh, what do you think about fast and furious about this saga uh before being a part of it that you discovered you were wrong while filming it you know what? There wasn't much misconception. Um, I, I'm a fan of the franchise and kind of evolved with the franchise. And uh, I think the most important thing for me was watching all of the installments before I, I landed to begin shooting F9. Because once you watch them all as a block, you really get a sense of the evolution of the franchise and what to expect out of it. So I think that really helped in like, this is going to be this. Yeah, it, it's okay. Yeah, it's pretty much this. I was, man, I was overwhelmed with the dedication and professionalism of everybody and, and their wanting to help. I really thought me being the new guy would, would be a lot tougher. Everybody was okay. so professionally wonderful. Okay. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. That I think you can feel it in the movie when you see it. So, so I agree with you. Um, uh, I, I, I think I, I wanted to ask you something. I want to talk to you about something, but maybe I'm wrong or if, if I'm wrong. Um, you're a big guy. Uh, you, um, it seems to me that maybe some people think that your training um, and the way you relate to your body is the same for every character. But I guess that is not like that, that your training for this movie is not the same as the training for other movie. And even if we are, even if people that don't know about training and don't know about exercise think that, that is the same, maybe you can tell me what's the difference and how you relate to your body in for a, for a, for a role or another. Uh, I, I hate to disappoint your theory, but I, I don't change my training. I don't change my training at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't. Basically, but the the reason for that is uh, I've I've been. I've been involved with physical health and fitness for over 30 years, 30 years. I really do feel I have a secondary instinctual nature about that. Okay. I don't, I don't have that same instinct about being an actor. I want to focus all my capacity on being the best performer I can and trying to worry about changing and varying my training from maybe a, a, a centimeter here or a little bit of a different look there is not worth the time. What's worth the time is me being surrounded by these great performers and taking in all their wisdom. So 
I don't, and this was the same for WWE. I don't ever change my training for anything. I, I train how I want and and that's it. And it, it's not like a, yeah, I don't, I don't ever, I don't ever change it. Okay. Okay. That's, that's impressive. That's also impressive. Um, I, another thing I wanted to talk with you, um, how you I interviewed you uh, a couple of years ago in Berlin uh, for um, Bumblebee, Bumblebee, the movie. Yes. 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 And it surprised me how calm and thoughtful and a deep guy you are. So how does a guy like you, who is very patient and who's, uh, you know, very calm, very thoughtful, ends up related to many projects that involve action and violence and and going fast like well, how what's what attracts you from there because your personality isn't much like that well i i certainly appreciate the kind words i do um i think that's the beauty of imagination we're we're in the imagination business and we're in the creative business and a lot of the the wonder about that and a lot of the excitement behind choosing parts and choosing people to work with is the the unlocking that like, wow, I've, I haven't had a chance to showcase this. This would be a fun try. Let's, let's give it a try. So I think it, um, you know, it's, it's the fun of the, the imagination that comes along with, with entertainment. Okay. Um, you also have a, a great, um, ha, I don't know how to call it. You, you love working. You, you have an ethic of work that you're proud of and you always, Uh, when you when you're asked about your holidays, you always say that you are always thinking about going back to work. So um, what's up, what's what do you like about being working all the time? About being occupied all the time? Uh, so so I've 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 taken a strong look at this, especially uh, in in the the recent turn of events where uh, with COVID isolation, a lot of us you know, we're, we're out of work and, and standing down. Um, it's not so much the concept of work or just effort like a hamster on a wheel. If you look at what I've been able to, to be fortunate to have the opportunity to do, perform in front of tens of thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands live, and then fall into situations where I can begin to create and be imaginative. It's not, it's not the fact that I need to do something. It's the fact that I truly love what I do. And then I was hit as the world changed, like everybody else with pretty much a, a 12 month stop down and really did enjoy my life because I knew that there was no, I knew that that set of opportunities was off the table. But as long as that exists, as long as someone will be like, Hey, I like what you do. I'd like to put you to work to be creative. I'm, I'm, I'm going to urge to go back there because I really do enjoy it. Well, that, that's that, that's very inspiring. Um, I there's one thing that you show, and it's your love of fashion. You you are a guy that loves to dress sharp, and oh. I was wondering that because this saga has all, very nice cars, but also very nice suits, suits, very nice clothes. People are dressing very sharp in the saga but your character does not your character is always wearing like exercise clothes and the clothes that are make them make him ready to be to go into action so i was wondering where was were you i don't know uh did that hurt you a little bit not to be able to play uh, maybe a sharper version of your character no no i i think it actually helps because This is kind of me. I, I do enjoy a suit and tie and I do enjoy uh, the process of getting ready, but I'm not going to wear this to go train, to go to the gym. Uh, it's, it's the, it, the look is a, is a definition of character. Jacob Toretto is um, calculated, cold, uh, perceptive, thought out, meticulous, utilitarian. Um, he, he is set for the occasion, no matter the occasion. So when you're, you're jumping rooftop to rooftop in Edinburgh, Scotland, hopefully you're not going to do it in a waistcoat because that's, that's counterproductive. <laughs> so it's not, I, I never, I never really, um, bother with, with input on fashion and movies. There's a professional department for that. And they, they spend so much of their time creating a character and wanting to, to bring forth that imagery that that actually helps to make Jacob the fact that he's ready for anything and that that sort of outfit that he has serves a purpose 
but I, I understand that perfectly. That I don't know. Maybe maybe next time I will see you as sharp as you are in real life in the screen in this movie. You're, you're uh, too that's kind. A, <laughs> that's another thing I wanted to ask you. Um, can you tell us if uh, your character is going to be seen in the next Fast movie? Is there something so that you can? That's a, you're, you're you're talking to a guy who was just invited to the franchise. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't have near that decision-making power. And, and honestly, a, a lot of that's up to the audience. If the audience is entertained and they like it, I'm sure the people who make the choices will probably ask me back. So, I, I, I mean, I hope so. Okay. Um, and th there's one thing that I loved about Fast 9, that is how it goes back to past times, to a, to a time where driving was pure, maybe more simple. Is uh, Those are things we were... Uh, your your character remembers your his father and the character of Don's does too, and I was wondering, as a wrestling guy, would you like to see a movie about the wrestling universe that does for wrestling the same that Fast does for racing? Um. So, so that that's a good question, but I think it's a little more intricate than that because we're talking about the ninth Fast movie. I okay. think the, the reason we can look back retrospectively is because Fast has successfully done so many great movies and started so many great character arcs that now is the right time to begin to tie all that stuff together and hopefully move towards a definitive end. If there was a, a series of movies, a franchise of movies about sports entertainment that could successfully do eight installments, and I use anything that's been a saga as an example, you know, fast is just one of a, a few, a handful of sagas. You, you want to see the end, but I don't think you can look back in retrospect until you've laid a proper foundation. And I think fast has done an excellent job. Like, yes, it's time to find out why. And that's why everybody is so excited about this movie because it is time to tie all these stories together. It is time to push forward to maybe a, a possible definitive end. And that's, it's very exciting. Um, would I like to see a movie like that? Sure, but it, it couldn't happen in one movie. I think it would take eight or nine movies to develop a love and passion for these characters, and then you could look in the rearview mirror. Sure, sure, that makes uh, absolute sense. Um, I wanted to ask you about another thing about you, about your Instagram, because there you post, um, and you, you call that um, images without explanation for your interpretation. And I don't know if you enjoy portraying a sense of mystery because it seems to me that you enjoy um, making other people believe they understand you and knowing that they don't. Are you mysterious, Mr. Cine? Well, uh, I, I, think, I think as humans, we all are, but um, this was an experiment that I started on social media. We get so much information via social media and everyone wants to be heard. And rightfully so, we all have a story to tell. But if you post an image and you let everyone know everything about that image, yes, you, you have no more questions to ask. But if you have no more questions to ask, what exploring do you have to do? And originally it started because WWE told me I had to have an Instagram page and I didn't want to do it. I was perfectly, <laughs> I was perfectly fine with just having Twitter and Facebook. But they're like, no, you have to do this. Okay, fine. I'm just going to do it my way. And they constantly were like, post pictures of yourself, use these hashtags, engage in conversation. I said, no, this is going to take you a while to understand, but walk through an art gallery without headphones and don't read the descriptions and just look at the art. And whether you're an aficionado or uh, dedicated to a certain artist or not, it's your first time going into the, to the museum you're going to have conversation about what you liked, what you didn't like and why. And that's what I'm trying to do with Instagram. I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to give people an idea and an idea is ambitious. An idea has conversation and thought behind it. I don't, uh, sometimes there are, there's, there's meaning into everything I post. I promise you that, but I don't, I don't care if anyone ever finds it because that's not the purpose. The purpose is just to have them engage of what could be. And I think the glory of conversation has been degraded into this is all the information. All right. See ya. And I, I really like that. Uh, I only post once a day. 
I never use any hashtag conversations. I never explain anything. And it's just, hey, this is interpreted as you want. And I, I just enjoy that. I, I just, uh, it, it, it less of a sense of mystery and more of a sense of, hey, anyone viewing this, I don't know, think about something for a change. Uh, put your mind at work. Well, don't, you're just not fed the information on a platter. I love that. Uh, congrats on the movie. We don't have more time, Mr. Cena. It's been a pleasure. Uh, enjoy the ride. Have fun. Thank you very much, man.